Welcome to the Americana Bistro Girl. I'm your host, Roberto Alvarez Galloso, substituting for Dr. Rob, who is out on vacation. And we're here to serve you the latest and the greatest in Americana music. For me, it is a pleasure and an honor having one of the greatest institutions of the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, Ariel Collins. For me, it's a pleasure and honor having you. Oh, thanks for having me here. The reason why we have we invited you is that we have heard your music via YouTube, and we love it. And it's a music that deserves to be shared around the world. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I did. Um, I saw that you had seen my video for the NPR Tiny Desk concert. Is that yeah. where you found me? I saw that. I also, I saw Jerusalem, which was beautiful. Plus, I also saw all, all of your other videos, especially your cover of Scarborough Fair. Oh. How, we're gonna, I'm going to ask three questions in one. Okay. How did you get started? How do you view your career in present tense? And how do you view it in the future? Hmm. Yeah, so I got started around 18 years old and I wanted I loved folk music I just wanted to make folk songs and I went off on a trip to Europe and then eventually just ended up staying there in Liverpool England and I started a band there and somehow it kind of turned into rock music for a while so I was playing with a band and we got relatively we established ourselves in the scene in Liverpool and that was for about five years or so but then because of visa issues I had to come back here and I started a new band Ludlings which I'm still in um, and we make really eclectic music sort of ranging from softer acoustic things to heavy stuff and then but because sorry I'm kind of all over the place but I basically I've been out of the country for the last 10 years just playing music in England and in Spain and the last couple years, especially after the pandemic, I wasn't able to actually meet with my bandmate, who's now in Chicago, for my current band, which is Ludlings. We're still together, actually about to release an album. But um, what I do now is I've gone back to my folk roots, and I'm playing a lot of quieter um, folk music um, by myself but also still working with my band when we're able to meet up, so. And how do you see the future? The future, well, when I was in England, I got kind of caught up in trying to make it. I was very ambitious. I wanted I wanted to make music for my living, so I refused to do anything else. <laughs> I, it was very impractical, but I, I was, um, you know, I was really idealistic about it. And I realized as I've been getting older that that was kind of taking away from the thing that I loved the most about music, which is just making it and making whatever you want without thinking about how it will be received, which is something that's really important to me. So now I've got a full-time job doing creative design stuff. And my music in the future is going to be for me. And I want to share it with people too but I want to make things the way I want to make them. And yeah, so it's been kind of a, a good thing for me. The evolution of it was, I went from being more ambitious to now I just want to make things that make me happy, make the best things I can make. Great. You said that you were in the United States, Washington State, England, and Spain. I saw some of your videos in Spanish. I would like to congratulate you on the videos that you recorded in Spanish. Which leads to my next question. How do you see, how do you reconcile your experiences in the, in the folk scene with the, in the United States, especially Washington State, England, especially Liverpool, and Spain? How do you reconcile your careers in those three countries? And how do you how have you come how do you compare the, the folk music scene in those three countries so i have to say that i mean i'm american i feel bad saying this but england is just it's a wonderful place to make music um there's a venue everywhere there's open mics 
there's loads of venues, especially Liverpool, because they're still really proud of their Beatles history. And it's just so lively. It's really easy to get started there. And I feel lucky that I was there, especially the north of England. Um, yeah, so I loved English folk music scene and indie rock music scene. It's very strong it's living over there. In America, we're still doing all right. We There's something just coming back. I know we had a, a hard time. A lot of the venues struggled, um, but it feels like there are lots of opportunities. Um, yeah, I'm looking around for places to play in Spokane, which is where I am right now. But then Spain, I actually lived in the Basque part of Spain, so mm. the Basque country. Yeah, That's where my ancestors came from, on my father's side of the family. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah, I was born in Ohio. My oh, parents wow. from Cuba. But before Cuba, my family side, my father's side was from Galicia. Oh, okay. And my mother's side was from the Basque country. And part of it was Spanish Basque, but most of it was French Basque. That's why I asked the question of folk music in Spain, in England, and the United States. Do you know which town she came from? A part of half of my part of my family on my mother's side came from um, a place called Angled and Biarritz. Oh, Biarritz. Okay. I, yeah, that's just yeah. over the border. Yeah, and and another part came, if I'm not mistaken, from Bilbao. Oh, I, that's where I did my master's in design. So I had to learn Spanish to do a master's there. And it was hard. But yeah, it, that's such a beautiful part of the world. And now the music scene in the Basque country is more punk than folk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did have a hard time getting into it. Um, I love the music. I just don't play punk music. And they've got a really strong music scene, but it's mostly punk and heavy. They like heavy sounding stuff. But that said, I love the Basque folk music, the older stuff, especially in the 60s and mm -hmm. before that. But my favorite Basque artist is Pancho Etapeo. Have you heard them before? Yeah, I've heard of him. They're just kind of, for me, they're the Basque Simon and Garfunkel. I love them so much. Um, but that's inspired me a lot. I wrote a whole little EP of songs in Spanish. And a lot of that was just my way of processing Spanish as I was learning it. And yeah, it's really invigorating to go to a new place and soak up those roots and make something of your own out of it. Yeah, because I, when I was there, I did feel my roots. I felt I felt my roots. I felt, with the, I felt it with the music from Galicia. And I felt it from the Basque country. In fact, I even picked up some words in Basque, like Esquerricasco, which means thank you in Basque. I show, maybe? Yeah, I show. Ongietorriac. Welcome. Yeah, that was in the, and in the 80s, the Basque, the Basque scene was really, really, it was not into punk. There was part of it folk music. And there was another part that was beginning with the folk rock and also the punk rock. Yeah, in the, in the 80s. Yeah, there's some really great punk songs from around that time, like Sorry, 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 Sorry. Have you heard that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're wonderful people, too. We lived there for, my husband and I lived there for four years, so we really got integrated into the little town that we were living in, Erasate, and still some of the best people I've ever met in my life. We'll always go back there. It feels like a second home. Yeah, one day I'm going to have to go back. And in addition, I have to go back to the French Basque country where my other part of the ancestors were from. Another one was from San Jean de Luz. Oh, I love that town. It's a wonderful little place. The little crooked streets. So, in addition to your past, your present, and your future, I also made some other comparisons with other folk singers especially one from Oregon called Laura Gibson who was famous for her her the, for doing the first tiny desk concert for NPR oh and both of you have had the same voices and there have been comparisons how is your style compared with other folk singers so i don't know laura gibson i i should write that down so i can have a little listen to her i'll send her when uh, when i finish the interview and i publish this I'll send you the link. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, I don't along know. Some of the, along with some of the Basque and Galician folk music. Okay, I can send you my favorite ones too. Um, but yeah, as for the question, how does my music compare to other folk singers? I don't, I don't really know how to compare myself to. I know which singers I love. Um, Tia Blake. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard her. I love sure. her. Um, my mind always goes blank when I start listing things off, but. Um... Don't worry. <laughs> okay. And of course, last but not least, where can we find, in addition to YouTube, where can we find the musical world of Ariel Collins? Yeah, so I guess I'm, I don't have that established very well right now for my own stuff. Um, I suppose the most songs are just on SoundCloud and YouTube. I am going to be working on a collection. Um, right now, my band is putting out an album. We've just finished We've been working on it for a couple of years. So that's really exciting. And it also means that I can shift gears and start working on this collection of songs I've been writing for the last I don't know two or three years and I'm excited about it it's more back to my folk roots kind of album and Jerusalem will be on there and because Jerusalem isn't recorded along with some others that I've written um, nobody's ever heard them because I haven't been playing live very much for the last couple of years either um, anyway so soon hopefully you'll be able to find it everywhere but it'll probably be another year before that album's done in the meantime, if anyone wants to listen to the more rock music that I make, Ludlings is my band, and we'll be putting out an album in the next couple of months. Great. Before I leave, how was, how did you get it? How did you get started with Ludlings? Um, it's when I I went to Bellingham Western Washington University to finish up my degree after I came back from England, and I did a degree in linguistics there where I met. My friend Vaughn, um, he plays the bass. So we got together with another guy who played drums, Walker, and we played a few shows in Bellingham. And then me and Vaughn stayed in touch after that, even though I went to Spain and we recorded long distance. And so he's just had so much patience with that. I'm really glad I found him because he's a great um, comrade with music. He'll probably be working on that folk album with me too. Great. For my public, I want you to visit Ariel Collins, not just in YouTube, but listen to the, such great, tranquil folk music as it should be interpreted. Also visit her, her group, the, well, the, what was the group? Ludlings. Love, uh, Love Links, and also in addition to visiting Love Links, visit her in SoundCloud. Her music is out of this world. At the same time, also please support other independent artists. They depend on your support and they're really churning out great music at a time when the world needs such great music to promote peace amongst the different peoples of the world. Also, please visit my YouTube channel, Alvarez Galloso. It's, 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 it's together, but it's Alvarez Galloso. And visit also me in Bitchu, Brighton, Rumble, Gab, to listen to all the other music of other independent artists of the American Bistro world. Because without independent artists, we are losing a lot in our culture and in the world culture in general. This is Roberto Alvarez Galloso from the center of Florida to Washington, to England, to Spain, especially Galiza y Oscalería. Mm. Peace in, peace out, and peace everywhere. And in the words of Laura Marie, be love. Laura Marie is a Texas singer-songwriter. You have to send her to me too.